Hey guys, hey, Coach Bill Sandil coming to you from Chandler, Arizona. It's another week, heading into the weekend. We just had a holiday. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Um, now it's good. Now it's uh, Black Friday. We're going to run into Cyber Monday. Before you know it, it'll be Christmas. And uh, yeah, the holidays are upon us. Enjoy the holidays with family for sure. And uh, I got a great question. And. Um, for those guys, first of all, for those guys that are online um, from the Shigon movement or from anywhere else, looking at my videos and commenting on them, thank you so much. Um, it just highlights and validates what I do, and I do appreciate you guys chiming in and, and creating discussion because it just helps me be a better uh, instructor. And, uh, and thinking of that um, brings me to a couple questions. I had, I had so many good questions because I have, you know, video analysis go, that goes on all the time. And what a lot of people see online when I post a player comparison or video analysis, they see a snippet of what I do. Um, certainly in an hour instruction, there's a lot of video that goes on and we talk about different things, but you know, not all of it is explained to the point where you know what I'm doing in the videos just by looking at it. So anybody that looks on my YouTube channel or wants to look at any other, the social media stuff that my stuff goes on, uh, Shigon Nation, Groupies, any of those guys want to comment, um, why don't you just ask the question? Uh, I think it's funny, we want to talk, we want to create dialogue about hitting and what's relevant. Uh, not not in the 80s, because there's I see a lot of guys talking about you know what hitters did in the 80s and they bring up a lot of hitters that what they did in the 80s unfortunately the 80s is not relevant to what we're doing right now unfortunately um and video analysis has gotten better it's explained a lot of stuff to us and uh yeah we're, we're just doing better things now than we ever did in the 80s but we you know we're not going to discount what those guys did either though those guys are very valid in what they did and but it also it moves us forward in today's game okay I know there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, teacher man and HLP and, you know, being a component. I, I, I've told people this. I am a component of HLP. It doesn't mean I I agree with everything. And I think Rich would, would agree with that, too, if they looked at my videos. I You know, there's not everything. Some of our terminology is the same. Uh, it may mean something a little bit different. But we didn't invent that terminology, guys. Uh, that terminology has been out there, just like the load has been out there for years, you know. Um, We've now adapted to different things. Um, yeah, we didn't reinvent the wheel when it came to terminology. We're using the same terminology. It could mean something totally different. But um, I do agree with a lot of stuff that he does because it's very relevant in today's game. So um, you can't argue that. You, I mean, if you try to argue it, it's base. You have to base everything off, off video and facts and all that. And you can have a difference of opinion. It's okay. Uh, I've always said this, the hierarchy in Major League Baseball, the Jeff Fries of the world, you know, that aren't, that weren't great power hitters, um, they're still playing Major League Baseball and making money. But there is a hierarchy that will, like the Aaron Judges are at the top, the guys, the Itanis, the Mike Trouts, the Mookie Betts, I mean, these guys are at the top. And then everybody else is in the middle and then there's a lower tier just making their way. Um... But again, you know, hitting is not about cloning people. And I think sometimes when you talk about certain aspects of HLP, uh, even Rich, I think Rich is trying to clone somebody. But I think a lot of the stuff he he talks about is very relevant. Um, HLP, I think, is in a lot of hitters. Um, and again, he calls it high-level pattern, and we call it something different, you know, but it's the same thing. We just call it different stuff. But... I don't think everybody strides like Aaron Judge. I think there's different aspects to toe tap, to leg kick, to no stride, to striding out, picking up. I think there's so many different timing mechanisms, that, but it doesn't mean that you don't have um, high level stuff going on in your swing. So I think I think sometimes the, the hitting community, the uh, Twitter community um, gets gets us wrongly accused of, of being components of just, just one thing. And they try to break us all down into one thing. You know, when we use trigger words like launch quickness, um, I use it, Rich uses it. I know a couple other trainers that use it. We may use it differently to mean different things, but they all lump us into one way. And it's just not the case. 
It's just not the case. So, you know, the long and short of it is, thank you for looking at my videos. It promotes discussion, which I think is, is great. Um, we need more discussion. Um, we need some educated discussion, not just discussion on where you played, because um, through the history, and this will bring me into the question I got from one of my parents. It was really cool. Again, when you do these hitting analysis, you're actually going through an interview, because what I tell people is, when I do a hitting analysis for you, it doesn't mean I'm taking you on as a client. It just means I'm kind of screening you to see if my philosophies match up with what you're thinking long term. And, and I look at your son to say, can I help you? If I don't think I can help you, then I'll tell you. And I don't have to, I don't have to take your money. You don't have to get instruction from me. And this is the other misnomer about guys like me. Um, I've been training a long time. I've owned my academy for 27 years. We've trained a lot of people. But I can tell you this, we're very selective in who we train. Um, I've been asked a lot, hundreds, thousands of times to train kids that are lower than 12 years old. And I always say kids that are 12 and under sometimes, and again, it's all maturity, right? Baseball maturity. Those guys don't need instruction. They just need to go out and play and have fun and learn the game and, and develop a love for the game. And then when stru an instruction comes in, it's a serious business. It's more serious, get the mechanics straight. Um, help them in the process of getting better if you feel like they can to move on and move forward in this game. And again, remember, everything is based on levels. You have to make your junior high team, your high school team, hopefully get a scholarship to go to college, which we've done very well with as an organization. You know, we've, we've gotten over $7 million for our guys. Um, and we've done very well. We've gotten them on to the next level, gotten them an education. And, and sometimes that's where it ends because one or 2% go on to play pro ball, baseball. And I think when you play pro baseball, you're playing at a high level. I, I don't, I think when you play high level college baseball, you're playing at a high level. And you know, Jeff Rye and other people may disagree with that because they played in major league baseball and that's okay. Uh, again, it opens up discussion, right? But you're also alienating all the coaches that didn't play major league baseball that are coaching in major league baseball. So it kind of disrespects them in a little way. Um, so playing high level baseball, does not mean you can coach one bit and that's been our staple as well we've you know I've run a, a certification program where we certify coaches all the time we have over 30, 300 certified coaches and some of my best coaches never played at a high level because they're not corrupted by different things they learn video analysis they learn metrics they learned how, how to teach and how to get through to people I think there's a there's a hierarchy there too so um, We've done very well in, in that respect. But let's talk about the question that I was asked that I thought it was really, really cool. I thought, I thought this was a very relevant question when you're, when you're really trying to pick a trainer or why you would go to a trainer in the beginning, right? So let's, let's look at the question that this parent asked me um, this week. The question that was asked of me was, after we, you know, we talked about my career and I told him I didn't play Major League Baseball. I worked 15 years in pro ball and all that other stuff. And we talked about philosophy and all that. They asked me this very simple question. It says, what was your, what was your breakthrough moment that made you want to coach? Or made you thought you could coach, right? Because I think that's, I thought it was a very, very good question. And, I, and, I, and honestly, I thought about this and I, and I had to go back to my, I go back to my playing days. I think at every level, you know, I've ever played at, I've done fairly well. And I've always led the team in hitting. I've always led the team in different offensive categories from high school where I was all state to college. You know, it goes back, I think, to when I was growing up, when my father was my coach. He made me play multiple sports. And I played football, I played basketball, I played soccer, and I really believe this, and I tell people this all the time, I think to be a really good athlete and to play uh, professional sports at a high level, I think you've had to have played multiple sports. I think there's something to be learned with playing football, with playing basketball, with playing soccer, having the discipline, being beat up underneath the hoop, being tackled, being tripped. You know, there's all these things that you learn um, from playing multiple sports, the roughness of it to develop your, your skills, to be able to take that. And I consider good hitters, good athletes. And so that was part of that question. What was my breakthrough moment is that when I started playing multiple sports, you know, so obviously fast track my way into pro, pro baseball. 
I, got, I was very fortunate uh, that when I when I couldn't play um, to to get into an organization like the Mets to give me an opportunity to start to learn the game from the business side, and then uh, three years into that journey, I went to the I went to the Red Sox Double A, and then the Twins Double A, and then what took me out to Phoenix was working in Triple A with the Giants, and then I've had. Milwaukee Brewers, um, Arizona Fall League. I learned a ton of stuff from Frank Robinson. And Frank Robinson, Hall of Famer, was old school. Frank Robinson was one of our first clients that we signed where we kind of were his agent when it came to marketing. And, and uh, Frank didn't have an agent at the time, and it was kind of cool. But he, he taught me a lot about the old style of how to play. But he also, I think he was a little bit ahead of his time because he was talking about how the game continues to evolve with pitching and different things. And now we're seeing that today. And that's the one thing I don't think Shigon Nation understands is that the game is, is evolving. And all we're trying to do is keep up with the game. And Major League Baseball has gone ahead and hired all these really, really smart guys out of Ivy League schools to, to run analytics and different things and um, becoming general managers at the highest level, being able to make trades for millions of dollars, uh, being able to bring in guys because because of what their their numbers tell them, and then of course what their scouts tell them, and what the and what the managers and the players tell them, it's a whole system, but it keeps evolving. And I think I think uh, why do I love coaching? Why do I why do I why did I get into coaching so long ago? And not, why, what continues to drive me is is part of what that question meant to me. My breakthrough moment was working with Bucky Dent, was working with Frank Robinson. Um, was being able to understand why playing other sports benefited me playing baseball. Um, helping me develop a course, listening to all the managers that I, I sat next to in meetings. I sat next to on the field listening to them when I was bullpen catching, when I was throwing batting practice for the world champion Arizona Diamondbacks and listening to Bob Brenly and, and listening to some of the players. I think I've been in more locker rooms um, than most people. And... You know, having my opportunity to go over to Europe to coach internationally and then kind of understand what that game was going through. And, able, and I was able to bring my, my skills over there and, and what I know from hitting and defense and different things. And, you know, you know, the Italian League was able to adopt, at least the team I was at, was able to adopt it, and we did very well. Uh, but understand this, guys. When I post an analysis video of one of my guys – it's probably broken into snippets and you don't understand what we're doing and it's okay. Some of the stuff I'm explaining, uh, my guys actually understand it, but staying connected and uh, front humorous compressing and all this other stuff, I think these are just ways in, in, of having discussions with different trainers on what they mean and what they can see. But I can also say this, the reason why you don't, I don't showcase a ton of major league guys um, through video analysis, which I know other trainers do, uh, to show what all major leaguers do, and high level guys do, um, is because you can take one swing out of every major leaguer uh, available, which will basically argue your narrative 100%. And somebody else can do the same thing to argue their narrative. The bottom line for me is that I think there's a lot of ways to teach this game. And when you have a closed mind mentality on just one way, uh, you know, which is the Shigon Nation, unfortunately. Um, you're, there's not a lot of positive dialogue that can, that can take place. And guys can't grow. You know, you can down guys for not playing at the highest level, but that's the only argument you have when you don't show video yourself teaching anybody your philosophy. When you're putting yourself out there with your philosophy every day, I think it takes a lot of courage and understanding, and, and I don't think a lot of those guys have that. So... Um, I do appreciate the comments. Believe it or not, you know I'm a guy that can have an open discussion even though you don't like my videos. Even though you may not like me or say what you say about me, I can have a, an educated discussion with you. Once you get personal, then I think, uh, I think the gloves are off and you know, we, can, we can talk in another direction that way. See, I'm a major advocate as well for the Melanoma Research Alliance. Thank you for what you do every day. And uh, keep, those, uh, keep those comments coming. You know, I'll, I'll be happy to answer any emails you may have to hitting wise and if you have any video analysis stuff i'll be happy to hand it to those too so thanks guys we'll talk to you soon this is a work of
Things don't work of art, got you pressed against the wall.